personally, what the best solo practice is, I would probably say side-to-sides. For me, they combine a number of different aspects that are so difficult to get in any one other exercise. The first thing is that they give you lots and lots of hits in a short period of time. And I think that's really important because what you need to do as a club player is you need to hit as often as possible. So going side to side, you get a lot of practice. Now, a lot of people don't know that there are progressions that you can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk for a few more moments and then I'm going to show you some of the progressions. Now while I do that, I won't say anything, but I will overdub a commentary onto that so you can see what's going on. I'll explain those progressions before we start. The first progression is simply a case of hitting the ball from side to side, not too hard, not too low, just to get your timing right. Now the idea is that it hits the side wall, goes across, hits the other side wall, bounces, and then you hit it back in that direction, and you keep going. Now, the uh, prerequisite for this video really should be the preparation for success. So you should have watched that video first, because I talk about a number of things. And the first thing I talk about is watching the ball hit your strings. Now that's so important, you must, must do that. And this side-to-side -side solo practice gives you plenty of opportunity to do that. You can just keep going and keep practicing that aspect. Now the second aspect that this works on, this exercise really works on, is your timing. Because if you miss time slightly, you, the ball will either go away from you, if you're a little bit behind or your racket head is lagging back, or if you're a little bit early or your racket head is not flat, it will come back at you. So this exaggerates bad timing, so suddenly you're moving up and down the court when you're not expecting it, the ball is coming back at you, the ball's going away from you, you can see very, very quickly whether your timing is working. Okay, so I'm going back now and I'm going to go through the series of uh, progressions. Now some of those progressions will be difficult for you and maybe you want to jump them onto the next one. That's okay. The, word, the order that I do them in doesn't have to be the specific order that everybody does. I'm just going to show you the evolution or the, the alternatives to the same. Okay, here we go. Now, what's You've probably noticed the target in the, on the wall over there. Well, don't worry, because we're going to talk about that later. Okay, so as you can see, I start hitting the ball from side to side. Now, I'm not really trying to hit it too hard, probably between 60 and 80% my maximum. I'm just looking for consistency. Now here, I hit one hard, one soft. One hard, one soft. I'm looking to go for 90 to 100% of my maximum and then I swap to the other side one hard one soft one hard one soft okay so now I'm going backwards a little right up against the wall and I'm going to start to move forward that just means hitting it a fraction late so I come towards the camera Getting closer, and then I'll need to hit it a little bit early to move back towards the front wall. Now you can go up and down the wall here. So now I'm about to switch sides because I want to use the target. Now the target on the wall there is actually to avoid hitting. I'm trying to hit it lower than that target because I want to go across the wall very, very fast and low. And it's nice to have a, a target to aim at or avoid in this case. So now I swap sides and I face the other way and this is no particular um, exercise, I just carried on. So now I'm going to do the volleys in a few moments and here we go. All right. So the first one is one to yourself, one back. So one to yourself, one back. Now the one to yourself gives you the opportunity to line everything up and make sure that you don't have to do too many adjustments. But at some point you're gonna have to go from side to side and that's what we're doing here and it's all about timing okay so my thing's got an error there but that's okay now you've probably heard or you will have heard my explanations for each of those exercises and as i've already said don't feel that you have to go through the same process that i went through 
Now, a couple more things. The first one is that if you're not nervous when you're practicing, you're not maximizing the time that you're practicing. Now, what I mean is, when you play a game, you're nervous about making a mistake. And I want that to be the same for most of your practices. So, what you need to do is you need to set yourself a target. Now remember, point three of the preparation was for success was I stick to my game plan. Well, that follows through onto practices. You should have written down how many you're going to do of each, after a few tries, of course, and then stick to it. So for example, I say to myself, 300 with no mistakes. Now, not 300 variations, just 300 basic side-to-side -side shots. If I make a mistake, back to zero. And I tell you that when you get to 250, you get a little bit nervous, especially if you've done it a few times already. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do 300. What you need to do is you need to hit some to see how you know, it works for you. And if you keep making a mistake at 10 or 15, set it at 20. Okay? Because you will become a little bit nervous. And don't stop your practice unless you finish your 20 or the time runs out and you're caught. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of those volleys because those volleys are difficult, no doubt about that. But they're so far removed from anything you'll do in a real game that sometimes it can be, it can be strange to think what benefit is it to me. Well, like many of the exercises that you do on your own, you're hitting the ball back to yourself. And of course, that's really not what you want to do in a, in a game of squash. What it's giving you is it giving you adaptability. Your technique might not be quite right, and my technique was probably a little bit bad because I've just come in cold from the court here. But what will happen over time, you will begin to feel more comfortable with them. True, you will never play this shot in a squash, game of squash, but that's not why you're practicing it. You're practicing it for your ability to adapt to difficult situations, okay? So to recap, the side-to-side -side exercise is my favorite. You don't care about that, and I don't blame you, but it gives you maximum amount of shots in a short period of time. And as you practice hitting and hitting and hitting, you'll get stronger, okay? And that's really important, because when you hit the ball hard and well, you feel confident. It works on your watching the ball hit your strings. You've got lots of practice to do that. And I can tell you that if you try to look up, you will get a headache very quickly and your time will go. It will give you balance. And the next thing it will do is it will work on your timing. Because it's great to hit the ball and hit the, watch the ball hit the strings, but if it's going in the wrong direction, that's not much good either. So this gives you practice at really fine tuning your timing. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please, 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 this, okay? If you don't practice and you just watch this video, it's a waste of time. Go out there and hit the boards. Email me with your experiences and maybe I'll update this video. So thanks for watching and time for get back to practice. See ya!